This sugar is so good. Hey, Luke. Hey, Virginia. What's up? <laughs> Nothing much, just eating some sugar. Oh, it sounds good. Yeah, it's really good. No uh, glycolysis is happening every all the time, everybody? No, what's glycolysis? Well, it's complicated. Glycolysis is the process of breaking down a six carbon sugar into two three carbon sugars or two pyruvates. Its inputs are two NAD, two ATP, and the six carbon sugar. Glycolysis starts by using two ATP to phosphorylate glucose, as shown in this picture. The enzyme will then split the six carbon sugar into two three carbon sugar molecules. Then a redox reaction happens when the three carbon sugar gets oxidized or dephosphorylated. The NAD plus is reduced to become NADH. Through this process for both pyruvates, four ATP are created, two NADH, and two pyruvates. These two pyruvates will then go into the bridge step, then to Krebs cycle. Two NADH will be eventually transported into the ETS, or the electron transport system, which we will discuss later. The four ATP is used as energy or energy storage. This is the bridge step between glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. I'm a carbon. I'm a carbon. I'm a carbon. And we're a three carbon molecule. This is oxygen. And the goal of the bridge step is to turn a three carbon molecule into a two carbon molecule. You do this by releasing CO2 and reducing NAD plus to into become NADH. NADH. Now we and now a two we are a two carbon molecule, molecule and ready to go into the Krebs cycle. This is a carbon. So what happens in the Krebs cycle is there are four carbons here. Then two carbons come in. The four carbons are called they're um, called oxaloacetic acid. And the two carbons come from the bridge step. Yes. So then they attach, and now we have a six carbon molecule. Okay. And then step two is that the six carbon molecule becomes a five carbon molecule. So, uh oh. Oh wait. Oh no. Okay. So now we've got a five carbon. And during that process, carbon dioxide over here gets rid gets let out. Yep. So that carbon turns into the CO2 leaves, leaves, and NAD plus gets turned into NADH during this process. So, now the five carbon sugar, a compound, goes into a four carbon. So, <laughs> that goes away. That also gets turned into CO2. So, now again, I have another CO2 gets released. <laughs> okay. And again, NAD plus turns into NADH. What do you know? Exactly. So now we have a four carbon molecule. And during this whole process so far, we've made enough energy to create one ATP. Yes, one ATP. Now we have four carbon, and they are rearranged through a redox reaction. Through a redox reaction. Where? Where FADH. Just FAD, little, just F FAD. And FAD. Turns into FADH. Turns into FADH. What, with a little two. <laughs> and the four carbon molecule keeps getting rearranged. Okay. Keeps getting rearranged multiple times until it turns into the oxyl acidic acid. Yep. And. And. And NADH goes gets turned into NAD. No, no NAD, NAD plus gets turned into NADH. And now this four carbon oxalacetic acid gets to go start over back in the process. It goes back in the process. And that is the Krebs cycle. Okay, so just to clarify what we just told you, Luke, who's the expert on the Krebs cycle, is going to give you even more information about this amazing process and how the molecules and the electrons go into the electron transport system. In the Krebs cycle, the main goal is to create electron carriers. You put in acetyl-CoA, 3NAD+, and 1FAD. 
So on the first step, acetyl-CoA enters the Krebs cycle by bonding with 4-carbon oxaloacetic acid to form a 6-carbon citric acid. From there, a redox reaction occurs and citric acid is oxidized and it loses a carbon and NAD plus is reduced into NADH. Next step, redo redo another redox reaction occurs and a 5-carbon comp carbon compound is oxidized. NAD plus is reduced into NADH again. In this step, we make one ATP by bonding an ADP with a phosphate group. Now, at step four, the four carbon compound is being rearranged as a redox reaction occurs, and FAD turns into FADH2. Then, another redox reaction occurs, and NAD plus turns into NADH, and the four carbon compound is rearranged into oxaloacetic acid to then enter the cycle again. Electron carrier. I am an electron. Okay, so the electron carrier drops off the electron, and then the electron goes through the cytochrome. The cytochrome and the cytochrome chain passes the electron from one to the next, losing energy at each step, and then it it goes up. Ooh. He eventually <laughs> loses all of his energy. Yeah, and, and then. Part. I'm an enzyme. I'm an H plus ion. Okay, so Alice is gonna take me, actively help me go through the matrix to the intermembrane space. Then she drops me off, and I passively go down the ATP synthase, and it spins me around, and I'm energy. The electron transport system happens in the inner mitochondrial membrane, the IMM. The first step is that the electron carriers drop off electrons and reduce first cytochrome. Then, H plus ions are actively transported from the matrix to the inner membrane space. 3. Cytochrome chain passes electrons from one to the next, losing energy at each step. So that's the electrons going through like the blue bubble, the th blue circles. Okay, four. H plus are passively transported through the ATP synthase and their kinetic energy causes motion which drives the synthase of ATP. Five. Four H plus and O2 and four electrons become two H2O and that is the formation of water. Okay, so here is some ETS vocabulary. Chemiosmosis, movement of H plus protons across the IMM to drive oxidative, oxidative for phosphorylation. ATP synthase, it's an enzyme complex that starts the formation of ATP by passing the H plus from the inner membrane to the matrix. Oxidative phosphorylation. The process of creating ATP from the energy of NADH and FADH with a little too. Cytochrome, electron carrying proteins embedded in the IMM. We're NADH. We're a three carbon molecules. We're a pyruvate. We did two NAD pluses and two electrons because this process happens twice. However, we only did one pyruvate, but this process does happen twice.